Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Okay, before I go any further, I'd just like to say a huge thanks to all my subscribers for staying subscribed and for any new subscribers, because at the time of recording this, I'm up to 2,995 subscribers, so five more only to get to a 3,000. Mm. Now, I know that's just a blip in the ocean compared to some, particularly a site I'll be mentioning in a minute, um, but to me, it's a big deal. 3,000 is a great round number, so uh, thanks a lot for that. Hopefully, you never know, by the time I've edited and uploaded this, I might have got them five extra ones. So, uh, okay, so into the video. So what it's about, a while ago, I did a review on a neckband speaker this one here if you click up here it'll take you directly to that review where i compare it to another one which sounded better but uh, didn't connect to me sat nav via bluetooth for some reason this one did now the reason i got it and the reason i bought today's review is for use in my kit car i have a kit car and i use this uh, garmin xt sat nav and to get voice instructions it's an open top three wheelers kit car no roof and it's if you're traveling at 70 on the motorway you get a lot of wind noise and I, I do like to hear the the audio instructions from my sat nav now if it's raining or whatever i wear a helmet and i've got a bluetooth helmet but if it's a nice hot sunny day i drive it open and you get all the wind noise around your ears and uh, it's hard to hear the sat nav so first of all, I started off with a little Bluetooth speaker, but that was embarrassing. People could hear the, the voice out of when I was at traffic lights in town and things like that. I thought of wearing headphones, but they just blow off and they'd be quite uncomfortable. So I thought, neckband, ideal. The voice comes up from there. Your ears are open to hear the, the traffic, which you need when driving to be aware of, of traffic and, and stuff. And I can hear it. Now, it does work great. And I recently saw a review of a much, much better pair than that, a Sony pair, on a fantastic channel called Techmoan. That's T-E-C. I'll put the name underneath here. T-E-C-M-O-A-N. Run by a guy called Matt. And he does reviews on various gadgets and things. And mainly sort of like old audio, uh, long-lost... Um, formats in audio and th things like cassettes mini discs and stuff like that really really great presentation style great channel 1.3 million subscribers so if you haven't tried that check it out it's a great site and he recently did a review on a, a similar neckband speak to that but a much better quality one a sony one that he wanted to use for listening to his, his home cinema at, at night now I put a comment in below about uh, Bluetooth connection problems that I'd had with some, and somebody replied to that comment, oh, you'd be ideal with some bone-conducting headphones, earphones. And I had heard of these bone-conducting uh, headphones, and it intrigued me, and I thought, well, do I need it? I can, I, I've got the, the neckband, which, which works okay. But they would be even better. They leave your ears open for traffic noise. The, the lighter weight than having that round your neck. And probably sound better. And even though that's lower volume coming out than me Bluetooth speaker I used in my car, you still can hear the voice. And a, another thing I use um, headphones and stuff for is for sort of like playing a video in a pub to your mate. You sat next to your mate and you want to show him a YouTube video put the headphones on um but obviously that's that next speaker's not convenient for pub use and they would still hear it so i decided to get some of these shocks bone conducting headphones now like i say i have got these don't worry we'll get to them in a minute i've got these fantastic uh, akg uh AKG 451 they are they're just a wired headphone and this is what I've sort of like use around the house I very rarely listen to anything on headphones in the house I'm not a, a big music fan pop quiz fan and stuff like that but I don't listen to much music at home via headphones it's usually on speakers now these are 
over-the-ear headphones, they call them. And I can hear myself talking now, but only just because there's nothing coming through them. They say that they still let you be aware of environmental sounds, these, but when the music's playing, or if I did use them for the voice instructions, I wouldn't be able to hear traffic noise, cars papping the horn, people shouting, sirens going off, anything like that, with these on let alone the, the ones over your ear so even though they're a great thing it's, and again still a bit sort of like awkward to get out in the pub and, and, and plug it in and that even though they're they are light as a feather so just put my specs on so i got these now these are as you can see shocks open run pro mini now, this Mini at the top, I'm going to go into that um, shortly. That's the size of the thing. They do a standard size and a Mini size. I'll show you. It depends on the measurement for your ear. I'll do that in a bit. Um, and they do a uh, Open Run and an Open Run Pro. I'll show you the, uh, the differences to them as well. But this is the Open Run Mini. These are the ones I decided on. Open Run Pro Mini. So, I don't know whether you can read any of that. All the small print is just different languages. But, uh, that's the only thing. Two year warranty, it says on the front. So, do a quick unboxing now. It slides apart like that. Very nicely packaged. The lid comes off. That. and in there again very nice case weighs nothing they're in there and you'd never know it weighs absolutely hardly anything and all the literature is under here so you get your usual safety things and guarantee things the user guide is the only thing you'll need warranty card with serial number on the back to register it these two are just like say safety and your european worldwide guarantees and that and these are your instructions so again if you want it there's just the five sorry four pieces the there's nothing on the other side and the inside is just uh, again different languages so we'll be going through it well but that's the first to turn it on and off can have a quick read of that pairing it it paired perfectly with the garmin which like i say one of the neckbands speakers i bought didn't and then you got your multi-function button for pause next song previous song and stuff on the side so that's like I said, that's all you need to see in the unboxing. So before I go into what I, what I think of it and uh, give us a short demo, I mean, you can't obviously give a demo of the sound of the sound, um, but I'll show you first of all the price of them and where I got it, and then we'll show you the uh, the difference between the pro and the standard and we'll show you the difference between the mini and the standard in size so this is where i got it so before i show you the uh, the actual place i got it from i did a normal google search on shopping for the uh, cheapest ones and as you can see you've got to be careful when you're looking there's open run pro and there's just open run and there's mini and standard so there's that one there open run pro 139.50 this one here from a bog dog open run pro mini same as i got from john lewis 160 quid here is where i got it from win stanley's bikes open run pro mini 129.99 130 quid and like i say i'd usually get from amazon but that's 130 quid at win stanley bikes uh, on Amazon, you can see here that 130 is for just the open run mini, not the pro. If you go along, that's a different make, Mawaja, 
open run again not the pro so be very careful when comparing prices there open run pro mini 160 quid 30 quid more so uh, be very very careful when you're doing uh, prices so like i say i got it from win stanley bikes there you see it open run pro mini 130 quid and you can have it in black in black at, at time of recording this um monday 6th of november they've got 10 in stock in black the color i chose beige is currently out of stock so um i must have got one of the last beige ones in stock so that was 129 if you look at my order here you can see it was a five or more mine was 134.99 that was only last week so it's gone down another fiver in a week maybe the black friday thing or whatever i don't know but uh yeah i could have waited a week and saved myself a fiver but that was the place i got it from so as you can see win stanley bikes was the best price uh, a lot cheaper than amazon and it came via amazon and it was delivered the very next day so as good as buying anything from amazon um i mean win win stanley bikes may advertise on amazon but if you go direct to their website you'll save yourself a, a big chunk of money and it was a brilliant service so that's the one i got the open run pro mini so first of all we'll have a look at the difference between the standard size and the mini size and i'll explain how to measure behind your ear and show you uh, their website explaining it uh, more clearly but let's have a look at the difference now between the mini and the standard size so as you can see there there's a standard size and a mini size this is the band that goes behind your head um, one is 21 mil shorter than the other if we click down here a size guide and that that is here it tells you really good on their website if you measure from uh, your middle of your left ear round to the your right ear if you've um as you'll see shortly i just do it with a steel steel ruler which is reasonably flexible but ideally a cloth tape measure or if not just use a usb lead or anything like that and then like hold it with your your hand and then lay it next to a ruler they even show you here look uh you can print this out on your printer and this on the right cut that out and put it behind like that to measure your ear so quite handy uh, guides on their website for which one you'll get so i'll show you now how just how i measured it and how it fits me so i haven't got a cloth tape measure so i'm just going to use this it's reasonably flexible and if i put that sort of like the middle that side is sorry Really, the side is at the middle of my ear, tucked in there, and then if I get this the same and measure it, I get that at twenty three, about what they say, twenty three and a half. So I'm right on the verge, and I got the mini size. So I'll show him you on. Right now, like I say, you get them in this nice case. And it weighs next to nothing, as I'll show you shortly. That's the charging cable. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And that's the headphones. So I'll just put them on just to show you the size. And they'll fit perfect with glasses as well. And that's sort of like the bone conduction bit. That's the bit that presses against this bone ear, I suppose, or any of them around there. But it's totally free of your, your ear hole so and if you look back and you can see that but it's a bit of you know they're not tight plenty of movement so an even slightly bigger head than mine can't get like a full thick behind but they're very very comfortable at the back and that's uh how they fit and 
like I say, they weigh next to nothing. Uh, I weighed them earlier on, all th three things. Let's just have a look now at the difference in uh, the weight of the three, the neckband headphones and these. Okay, so we'll uh, just put this on, this little bit of support plastic, because the, the glass lid's not quite big enough to support the, the neckband, so we'll re-zero that. And weigh the neckband one first. As you can see, that is 308 grams. Or 10 ounces, that 10.8 ounces for the neckband. Now if we weigh the AKG headphones, they're uh, 4 ounces or 116 grams. And finally, the shocks headphones, that's just 27 grams or 0.9 of an ounce so as you can see the shocks are by a long chalk the uh, the lightest so as you can see a lot of these like I said, next to nothing you don't you don't even know you've got them on and again very very comfortable i've only wore earbuds once uh tried some of it with friends and i didn't really sort of like the experience they, they, they were okay but i prefer nothing in your ears at all so yeah they are very uh very comfortable so like all titanium i'm presuming in here is the titanium band but that's what they say so i'll show you the difference now between the um pro and the uh, the normal the open run just the standard one so you've decided which size you want mini or standard size both the same price but the Pro are 30 quid more. Now, I read quite a few reviews, and they said the best value for money is the standard one. So uh, if you don't need the Pro extra features, I might, be, I might have been better getting the standard one. But uh, I saw this for that, that price at Win Stanley Bikes, and I thought I said, it's a good price, and I'll go for the uh, the couple of extra features of the of the Pro. So uh, let's have a look at the difference between the, the non-Pro and the pro now so again off uh, shox's website which is uh, really good with all the uh, information these are the two differences there's like a compare facility so i'm just comparing the two the open run and the open run pro 30 pound extra for the pro so you decide uh, for yourself whether the extra features are worth it are worth that 30 quid now the standard ones i've got it clicked on standard now not the mini like i said standard and mini is a size the same price for the um, mini or standard of each it's just the different features of the open run here open pro open run pro which are 30 quid more but on the standard size on the open run you've got four colors you've got the black the blue the gray and the red sort of like a two-tone grey, as you can see, dark and pale grey, two-tone blue, sort of two-tone black, and two-tone red. I like the red. On the Mini, you've only got sort of black and grey, or sort of two-tone blue. On the um, Open Room Pro, on the standard, you've got all black, see all teal blue although it's two shades there that's my favorite color the beige which is the one i got or like a pinky color um on the uh, standard but again on the mini you've only got the black and the beige the one i got so that's the difference in colors more colors available on the older on the um, standard size ones than the mini for some reason 
Now, the difference in actual sort of performance, whatever, on the standard, it says 8th generation technology, 9th generation on, just because just it's a newer a newer model. Battery life is two hours more on the Pro. Charge time is half an hour less on the Pro. Standby time, so that's like, turned on but not receiving any uh, signal to uh, to transmit any any music or whatever 10 days so it'll last me for, forever and I'm only going to be hearing the voice instructions so plenty of time on that quick charge both of them yes I'll show you the charging uh, the charger close up soon sweat and water resistance now the old one the or the standard one IP67, that's more waterproof than the new one, which isn't as waterproof. Again, I will only be using it in the... Uh, if, if I just get caught out in a rain shower, if it's heavy rain, I put my, my helmet, my Bluetooth helmet on. Both Bluetooth 5.1. The weight, 2 grams, 3 grams more, and it matches the weight I got out of it pretty well three grams more for the um the pro both full titanium and the uh, a year later release from that so after five minutes charging on the pro you get an hour and a half you get that on the uh, the non-pro one from 10 minutes charging slightly smaller battery in the pro even though it lasts longer so obviously a uh, uh, a better battery and then everything else just seems uh, exactly the same like I say, apart from that waterproofness so uh, yeah so like I say if you want to save yourself 30 quid and you're not too bothered about the 2 hours extra battery time and, and that by all means get the, the non-pro one so I mentioned before the uh, the battery connector the charge connector is a proprietary one that just fits this um, more convenient but uh, whether it had been better just putting a USB one on I don't know that any charging lead could have charged it but what it is you've got those two probes under there just about to see it on that and then you've got the same matching two probes on the charge lead and they go together just click in there like that just hold it anywhere near and dead dead easy like I say just a what was it an hour to charge hour and a half something like that just after five minutes charge you've got an hour and a half's use so that's really good i just keep the uh, charge lead in the top of the storage bag now okay so i'm not going to go through all the linking procedure it's the same as with linking any other bluetooth device i'll show you putting it in the the, the mode for pairing up but uh, your phone or your tablet or whatever, you'll just go into your Bluetooth menu, search for new devices, and it comes up, shocks, headphones. And it linked no problem whatsoever with my tablet and my phone. And importantly, the um, sat-nav. So what you do to turn it on, normally you just turn on. Hopefully you'll see the, the light. So I'm just pressing the forward button. Once it's lit, it's paired up with your device, you just turn it on and it automatically, uh, if it's the only Bluetooth device, it'll automatically pair up. You don't have to do it, obviously, every time. Um, so to turn it on, you just push and hold the button for three seconds until the light goes blue. What is it? To turn it on, press and hold it for two seconds until the LED indicator flashes blue. I'll, tu I'll turn these lights off. I'll just turn that one off. You might be able to see it a bit better. 
so hopefully we'll see this so it's off now and you just turn it press the on off button and hold it for what was it again for two seconds till the led flashes and blue so that's blue now it says they call it audrey the voice they say audrey it says some of that welcome and it gives you your battery state battery state medium or whatever and if you've already paired it with a device it should just find that device automatically if you've got bluetooth turned on on it to turn it off you hold it in till it goes red and then let go and that's to turn it off and then to pair it like so i won't show you the pairing procedure but what you do you hold it in for five seconds i'm pressing now till it goes through the thing and it starts flashing red and blue so right so we're in red and blue flashing now so that's in pairing mode you turn your phone on search for devices and uh, so on and then once it's paired obviously i'll turn it off now there it went red and off so blue is on doesn't stay on all the time you just let go as soon as it says turns blue and then you've got lower the volume or higher the volume and it, it bleeps on every uh, button press and uh, like i said the one on th this bit once you've turned it on then it's just volume up and down that button and then this one here is your one press skip forward a track two clicks skip back a track three clicks sorry one click is play and pause two clicks next song three clicks previous song and then if if your phone is ringing you press once to answer it press again to end the call and uh, like i say it works really well so hard to demo it but i'll just do as much a demo as i can now okay so i've now sort of like done a demo of it with the the headband and the the shocks the difference but i'm just adding this bit in here because I've, I've just recorded it and i had to do it set up a, this mic as a different mic because my first one has all sorts of uh, filters on it in obs uh, noise cancelling and, and gain and stuff like that and i found after i'd recorded it that it was thinking it was background music and cancelling it out background noise and cancelling it out so i've had to set up this mic with no filters on but what I forgot to do was put the 250 millisecond delay of my voice on. So I'm recording this bit on how I normally do, so my lips are perfectly in sync with the sound. But this next bit, you'll notice my lips are out of sync. But I've already recorded it all, and you still get the idea. But apologies for my lips out of sync, and, uh, because I did forget to set that delay. So let's get straight on with that bit now, and uh, it's self-explanatory. Okay, so like I say, I can't really demo them, but I can show you um, how they're going to be really good for my particular, quite unique, can't be the only person who needs them for this, but not a normal sort of like need, like I say, listening to it while driving a car fast in the wind and wind in your ears. Now, like I said, this is what I use now, but because the sound is coming from this, through my ear holes into me me ear so would the wind and that would probably block it out so my idea is to blow a lot of wind create a lot of wind with this in fact i'll take that off to uh, make it a bit a bit wider uh, it's a really really powerful uh, blower for cleaning out instead of using compressed air to clean your computer your pc out and that uh, use this uh, I think i'm pretty sure i did yeah i did do a test of it at least two or three years ago click up here if i've still got it the link to the video will be up here on how effective they are cleaning a pc out 
but what I'm going to do is blow around my ear and see if I can still hear this. Uh, now, apologies for any sound that you might hear. I don't know how it's going to come out. This is extremely loud. I've tried it before and I've had to turn off the noise cancelling uh, part of the microphone so it's not cancelling any background noise and nothing now because it started cancelling this sound out. So I'm going to turn it on first. I've got a track lined up. It's uh, one of these royalty free YouTube things so I shouldn't get a copyright strike on this. Uh, and I'm going to start it playing and listen to it and then I'm going to turn the, the wind on, blow it round my ear and uh, plug my other ear up and see if I can still hear it. Um, I have tried it earlier on and it is hard to, to hear. So uh, face might look a bit stupid. Might do a bit of a Jeremy Clarkson uh, impression when he was in that car. So uh, let's see how it goes. So we'll start playing this music now. So you should be hearing that being picked up by the mic now. I'm going to block this up and blow this round my ear and see how I hear this. so apologising if it was really really loud I'll turn it down during editing if it's that bad but yeah I couldn't hear it when that wind was blowing in my ear and swirling around my ear I couldn't couldn't hear this it was vaguely sort of hear it in the background so I'm going to put the uh, the shocks headphones on now and try the same thing you won't be able to hear it when it being bone conducting uh, stuff but uh, I'll uh, tell you whether it's uh, any better than this. Okay, so I've got the shocks on now. And uh, when you turn them on, and it connect, it says connected uh, and battery medium. Um, so, you know, and then you can turn turn up once the, the, your source starts up, you can turn the volume up. So I'm going to press this now. Obviously, you won't hear anything because... The mic won't pay. I'll, I'll hold my head close to the mic, but I don't think you, you, you'll hear anything really. So uh, press that. Right now, I can. Yeah, it's quite loud. I can still vaguely hear my voice. I can. I know I'm shouting now, but I've got to shout to make myself heard. But uh, I can hear myself. I don't know whether you can. So I'll now turn this on and see if I can still hear. Yeah, a vast difference because the sound from these is going through my bones I heard it no problem at all um, that that was blowing wild around my ears and uh, no problem I, I, I was aware of it but I could still hear this really really loud so that will be absolutely ideal while driving the car okay so I just thought of a, a way I could uh, demo that they are outputting sound like I say, you're not hearing it through a speaker, so as I hold it next to the mic here, I'll bet you're not hearing it. You can hear a slight, slight bit. But if I hold it to something that can resonate, because it's like one of them, if you remember, I suppose you can still get them, but all the rave about sort of like 10 years ago were these speakers that you could just put on a desk, and the desk was the resonating thing. It wasn't a speaker, it vibrated against a, a desk or a, a receptacle or an empty tube of Pringles or whatever and that acted as the sounder so I'm thinking empty vessel empty uh, container and if I put the bits that are vibrating against here you should hopefully be able to hear it through the mic yeah. so, 
As soon as I take that out of the way, you'll hardly hear anything. So uh, that proves they are transmitting the sound by vibrations against your bone. So yeah, it surprised me uh, then. I didn't realise when I was doing it that uh, the mic was picking up the sound when I just held the Shox headphones without the, the resonating tub near the mic. So it just shows that vibrations going through the air generated by the shocks was being picked up by the mic. I was amazed that you could hear that because you can't when you just sort of like hold it near your ear so yeah hopefully like i say apologies for the out of sync bit but i wasn't going to record the re-record the whole lot again we're back on the normal mic with uh noise cancelling and that now um yeah hope that demonstrated to you how a bone conduction works so definitely that's what i will be using because when i had that breeze that breeze gale hurricane of wind blowing around my ears with these on i could still hear everything perfectly so i'll hear my voice instructions whatever the weather um these uh, i couldn't so in the windiest weather even though they're loud i couldn't hear and like i say in a pub the rest of the pub would hear it and, and, and it'd be quite inconvenient so don't know what i'm going to use that for it's it's a standby anyway but uh, this is what i'll be carrying around with me whoops me lovely little AKG ones. I'll continue to use them at home for listening to music because they are way better sounding than these. But this is what I will be uh, carrying around with me. Trips out with me scorpion because they go like that. If you're trying to put them in the bag, I thought I was trying to force them in next to each other. No, they do cross over, and that's how they're supposed to go and i store the little specialized charging lead in the top there but uh much easier to carry around you could fit that almost in your pocket so it weighs absolutely next to nothing so absolutely perfect for my um my use so yeah would i recommend them would i recommend them instead of headphones for listening at home no but for out and about doing for what i've described and for what they're designed to do yeah and they do sound quite good not as good as headphones but not too bad at all so yeah and hopefully if you can save a few bob don't know when they'll go up again but in one week's gone down even further but win stanley bikes was a great service next day delivery through amazon so hopefully it has been of some use if you're contemplating buying something like that uh, if you have liked it please give me a thumbs up if you haven't by all means give me a thumbs down if you haven't subscribed already and like i said i just need them five extra subscribers to get to uh, three thousand that'll be a, a landmark for me that'd be great so uh, just click the little picture of the shed here on the left if it's not here now it will be in a minute to subscribe and then click the bell icon below to be informed of any future uploads don't know what my next review is going to be tomorrow i have got arriving uh, an outside storage shed a ketter one of them plastic storage sheds that you can lock up for storing some of me less valuable tools like car washing buckets and stuff the garage is getting pretty chock-a-block with tools at the moment as you can appreciate all this stuff i'm buying from littles uh, the valuable stuff will be kept locked in that the less valuable car washing stuff and all me like car waxes and things like that i'll be keeping in the uh, the outside shed so mm, unsure whether to do uh, a review of that because it is basically just a big plastic box um if you see this and you want me to do one place a comment below uh, might do one anyway uh, so maybe that one might be my next review um if anybody from a bamboo labs are watching this i would absolutely love an x1 carbon or a p2s to review i'm really really thinking about uh, getting a p2s printer um 3d printer but <laughs> i'll have to save up for that so uh hopefully catch you for the next one thanks so much again for watching this
the icon shed icon here to subscribe should have arrived now thanks again bye for now